And discipline is simply defined as self-imposed standards for the sake of a higher goal. Again, discipline is defined as self-imposed standards for the sake of a higher goal. So I'm, I'm talking now about self-discipline. All leaders have to have the quality of self-discipline. You are not a leader if you are not self-disciplined. Now, self-discipline implies that there are other discipline. In other words, discipline externally is considered other discipline. A leader doesn't need much discipline from the outside. They self-impose discipline on themselves. And that is what we call self-discipline. Now, the key to achieving your vision is discipline. And this scripture found in Proverbs 29, we read it early this week. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Blessed is the man who keeps the law. A little definition here of what that means. Where there is no vision, people throw off restraint. That's what that word perish means. It means to throw off self-control. In other words, where there is no revelation of the future, people throw off self-discipline. So the key to your life is finding a vision that imposes discipline on you. In essence, vision is the source of discipline. I'll explain discipline in a minute, what, what, what it means, how it works. Discipline is the root of leadership. It actually is the, the very nature that attracts people to you. A disciplined person naturally begins to attract people because people admire discipline in other people. That's why we go to see athletes perform. We really admire the discipline that they put themselves through. If you do the same thing as a person, people will then begin to believe what you say. Your very life of discipline creates trust. People trust a person who they perceive to be disciplined. This is why athletes also are used to promote and advertise and market products. People, they are selling the discipline of that athlete. Okay? Not their fame, but their discipline. We think it's a discipline. I mean, it's a fame. It's actually a discipline. We, we, we think that if we wear Nike shoes, we will jump like Mike. Okay? So the, the idea that they sold us was, if you want to be like Mike, now you know 180 pounds and some chitlins, you cannot be like Mike. But you still buy the Nike shoes because the idea is what you're wearing. So you are buying the discipline that he has in his life that produced the kind of professional athleticism that he is known for. And so you are really um, impacted by the discipline. Uh, we love to watch sports and not play it. <laughs> Why? We admire those athletes because of their discipline. The same thing is true about you. If you remain consistent and disciplined in your life, you'll find people will come just to watch you and they'll want to actually pay to watch you they bring their offerings and their tithes to watch you do what you do it's incredible so discipline is powerful and according to the Bible discipline comes from vision vision a man or woman without a clear vision for their lives lives a very loose life but a man with a vision they live a very narrow life. Very important. The disciplined people live very narrowly. When a man or woman has a vision, their life becomes very, very tight. Why? Because vision simplifies life. What do I mean by this? Again, it'll take a couple of days to teach this, but it's very important. When you capture a vision, it simplifies everything everything because vision controls all of your choices after that once you know where you're going you also automatically know what roads won't take you there you understand that statement so if if if, if, if you know what to do you automatically know what you shouldn't do 
Vision defines your what to do in life. Because vision gives you your address, your permanent address. It shows you your destination, where we get our word destiny from. Your destiny dictates your decisions. Write it down. Your destiny dictates your decisions. So life becomes simple. Uh, if someone offers you something and it doesn't uh, collaborate in its unity with your vision, it's easy to say no. See, but without a vision, it's tough for you to refuse things. Life becomes complicated. Let's take another thought here and see if we can push this a little further. You were not born to do everything. Say amen. Boy, I'm so glad when the Lord told me that. I said, oh, thank you. The pressure is off. We somehow have this attitude that we have a lot of things to do in life. I disagree. I used to think so myself. You don't have a lot to do in life. Isn't that wonderful? When you study people who have been successful in their lives and eventually became influential, like Moses, and Joseph, and Joshua, and David, and Paul, Jesus, Abraham, Lincoln, Abraham himself. I mean, all these people, you think their lives, they're very simple people, very simple people. There's a term that is normally associated with them. Here's, here's a term. This one thing I do. See, you got to get to the point where you're only living for one thing. And life becomes simple. People who discovered vision, they live longer. They live healthier. There's no stress. Stress comes from not knowing what to do. You remember the story of Matthew, I mean Martha rather, and Mary. Jesus said something to Martha that changed my life. Let me talk about Martha for a couple of minutes. Martha's an interesting woman. Martha is like most of us. We live on assumptions. Even of God. Martha had a visitation from God. He came to visit her house. Guess what she did? She assumed he was hungry. See, that's the problem. We think we know what God wants us to do. One thing you learn from this summit so far is that vision is from God. You don't tell him what you are going to do. You got to report to him, submit to him, and stay still until you are clear of the revelation. <laughs> Because without that revelation, there is no self-discipline. Martha ended up cooking for God and he wasn't hungry. And then she came to God and says, look, why don't other people come and help me? Send my sister to help me. Now the answer Jesus gave you must study. It was a leadership answer. He said, Martha, you are so busy about many things tell your neighbor I think that's me and that's what your life is like all of you who have known me for the past 20 years you know that I, have, I haven't changed I've grown but I haven't changed there's a difference between growing and changing I grow in my knowledge and my experience and my experience but I haven't changed I am still the same guy with the same message same intent. That makes my life simple. He says, you're busy about so many things. You're trying to do everything. You're trying to be everybody and trying to be everything to everybody. And then he said to her, Martha, big words, only few things are necessary. Boy, that's a beauty, eh? He said, look, life is filled with a million questions every day and a million things to do. He said, but only a few things really necessary to do in life. Let me ask you a question. Are the things you've done for the past 11 months in this year, were they necessary? Don't answer it, just think about it. You might be shocked at your answer. The question then is, what is necessary? How, how do you define necessary? 
It's, it's answered in the Bible very clearly. It's easy to find what's necessary. Necessary, according to Paul, the apostle, is defined like this. Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, All things are permitted for me to do. I can do anything I want. He says, but not all things benefit me. Interesting. I don't care how old you are now, you're going to soon be dead. 70 years are so short, you ain't got time to make a mistake anymore. And if you're 40 years old, you are already over the 50% mark. So you better make sure you clear this thing quickly about what your vision is and define it so you waste no more days. You're going to be dead soon. This is no time for experimentation. This is a time for intentional living. You've got to know where you're going now. This is too late to take detours and go through corners you ain't supposed to go through and wondering how to get there. You better know your destination from this mountain. When you leave here with your certificate tomorrow, you better have a clear idea. And that's why this session is important for you. Because you ain't getting no younger, see? He said, Martha, only few things are necessary in life. There's some people in your life who are not necessary. Some of you got the wrong company. And they've eaten up your time, wasting your time, eating with them and playing with them and watching TV with them and going to clubs with them and, you know, going out to, to, to conferences with them and all this stuff and all this stuff. And God is saying, look, you're still not getting where you're supposed to get to. These people are distractions. Some of the books you have been buying are not necessary. Romance novels, magazines, fashion. I mean, they don't get you to your dream. You see, when you have a vision, it simplifies life. You can walk up to a bookstore shelf and know exactly what books not to buy. See, vision dictates everything. 